Guys, when you're building a website, whether it's for yourself or your business or a brand, one of the hardest things to do is actually find a domain name that is short and relevant and available. Thanks to .tech domains, finding the, the perfect domain is actually much easier. Programmers, tech startups, and brands finally have a domain of their own. This is why Intel, Viacom, and even the Consumer Electronics Show are now using .techs for their domain. So don't wait, there's a Black Friday sale coming up. It's the perfect time to secure your domain at 95% off. You can pre-register before the 23rd of November to get an additional 10% off on top of that. You just have to go to www.go.tech forward slash Chris Hawks. That's go.tech forward slash my name, Chris Hawks. And you can pre-register now. Hey guys, what's up? So this video, I'm gonna show you how to get up and running with Gatsby like real quick. So. What is it? It's a static site generator. If you guys haven't heard about it, if you have basic websites that don't have database connections, authentication, things like that, then it's a, it's a great option. Um, so to get it installed, it's actually simple. You do have to have Node.js. You should also have Git. So from the command line to get the Gatsby CLI installed, so it creates projects for you, just say npm install global and then Gatsby CLI. So you can see I have version 2.4.5. So now I can CD into the uh, projects directory that I want to work out of. Uh, you know, I'll just uh, make a directory. I thought that was already there. All right, so now I can, uh, I'm going to go into that directory that I'm going to have this uh, tutorial running out of. And then from here, uh, I just have to say Gatsby new. And then this could just be whatever you want it to be called. And we're just going to call it uh, my... Eh, yeah, we'll call it my app. So once that's done, we're gonna just gonna CD into my app and then say Gatsby develop. And this will automatically have like a watch built in. So as you're making changes to the source code, it's gonna automatically watch it and make those changes for you. So now if we run the app, you can see that it's listening on uh, port 8000 localhost, and we have this uh, basic, ugly looking app. So, Gatsby uses React component CSS, it's using GraphQL, and it does all this stuff out of the box for you. So, if we look at the file systems here, there's a bunch of files in here that um, really it's configuration settings, but a lot of the, the con core configuration is going to be inside this Gatsby config.js. Inside the source here, you can see the components. There is this header component and a layout.css, which is the modular CSS that I was telling you about. And you can see that it's actually importing the CSS right here. So any sort of global CSS uh, should be done right here. As you can see, that background that we had where the uh, color was really ugly, I think it's an H1. Uh, we're gonna change that. Well, the font, yeah, that's, we'll change this font for right now. So I'll make that. So another thing to notice is that the components can also have styles baked into them so that they're um, clearly defined for just a component and they're not gonna run into any sort of cascading issues uh, that traditionally come with CSS. But this is where I would change that ugly background color to black. So because we're doing a watch, we didn't have to rebuild or anything. You can see that now we have the Georgia font. Uh, actually, this is the Georgia font up here and then the, the background got changed to black. If we want to create a new React component, let's go ahead and do that now. This will be a, uh, we'll just say movie.js. And this is going to use import React from React. So we need to use the React, React library. And for now, we'll just, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and export default class movie. And then this is React, uh, no, extends React.component. All right, so our, let's, uh, instead of our constructor, we'll call super. Uh, we'll, yeah, we'll pass in props, call super props. All right, and then here, let's go ahead and set our state. So set this dot state equals, this is just a new empty dictionary. Um, all right, so then uh, on this, let's just, for right now, we'll just do the render function. So we'll say, um, render function return and this is where we return the actual jsx code and it has to have one parent uh like one outer container and anything inside of here is going to be jsx so hello 
JSX and React. Uh, <clears throat> I have tutorials on Udemy. Please buy them. Okay, so um, as we have this component, if we want to go ahead and make use of it, so we're going to go into our pages, into the index.js, and up here at the top, let's go ahead and import our component. So we're going to say import movie from, and uh, this actually it needs to go back to directories, components, forward slash movie. All right, that should work, I think. All right, so now that we're um, we're bringing that in under the image, we're gonna go ahead and use our uh, movie component. Our movie component doesn't take any props on it or anything like that at the moment. So now, if we switch back to our page, that you can see it's already picking up on our components. So we have Hello JSX and React. All right, but let's th that's boring. Let's go ahead and pass some data, and this is gonna be uh, immutable data. Immutable data in React should always be passed in as props and it's going to be basically it's it's data that does not change obviously so any data that does change you're going to want to store that in the state everything else is going to be in props that's the difference between state and props and react in a nutshell let's go ahead and create a data component here and we're going to pass in an object so this object is just a regular javascript object that we're passing in and it could have a value of foo and well the key is foo and the value is bar so if we go into the movie um, a component we go back here we can now make use of that we can say uh, this dot data dot uh, and I'm sorry this dot props dot data dot and then if, all right so now that we have that let's go ahead and um, take a look at our app and you can see our app now has bar so what I'm going to do is in my index I'm going to go ahead and paste in this movie object and this is just uh, some temporary data Normally this data is going to come from like an API or it's going to come from like your local file system. It's going to come from somewhere else. Most likely it's not going to be hard coded inside the file itself. But in this example, it doesn't matter. So now what we're going to do is instead of passing this object, we want to go ahead and pass our movie object in. We want to switch back over to the movie to now use that data that's being passed in. So here we'll change foo to title. And I believe, so on my data, I have some, um, I have like a, an ID on it. Uh, basically the ID is just for a YouTube trailer. So if we go up here, this is the ID for the YouTube trailer. So if I went over to the trailer, I click share and I do embed it's going to give me the iframe code that I need so I'll copy that and I'll put that inside my movie object here and then clearly what we need to do is some string concatenation right here so let's go ahead and put this inside curly braces because any sort of expression needs to be inside curly braces with uh, with react here and using JSX and then obviously this is where we need to inject the um, the movie ID. So with Gatsby, we can even be really hipster and use the new template literal syntax. So use the backtick character. And then right here, if we do in dollar signs like this, we could go ahead and reference this.props.data. Uh, I think I just call it ID or trailer. I call it trailer, I think. Yeah, I call it trailer. So then finally we have since well yeah let's go ahead and put under the under this we'll have a p tag and then this will be the genre i guess we'll go ahead and display that since we have that item okay and then finally the image should probably yeah we'll put it down here that's fine so image source is equal to this dot props dot data dot image all right, and we need to close this off. All right, so it looks like our uh, our movie object is now pretty good. This is a movie component, it's all self-contained. If we wanted to put CSS, we could do that right in, uh, we could put that right into this. So what I wanna do is go back to my index page. I wanna get rid of all this placeholder data that we have in here. So get rid of everything except for our movie object, and I don't even want the link in there. So just make sure you don't get rid of the layout. 
so now if we go back to our app, you can see that we're starting to get the the starts of, of a basic website here. We got our uh, a genre here, and then we got the super bad title, and we got the trailer that actually works. And this is and what you're gonna do with that. It's a funny movie, by the way. You guys should check that out. Now, if we want to extend our component to have a little bit more dynamic behavior, let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna add a button down here, and it's gonna have an on-click event. And we'll just call it on click. So we'll say on uh, on click. All right. So then we need to go ahead and register the on click event here. We're gonna say this dot on click equals this dot on uh, on click dot bind. We need to bind our this context since uh, JavaScript doesn't really have actual classes. And then from here, we're gonna go ahead and have our on click method defined. And this will just for right now alert hello world. or something like that. So now if we click on this button, you can see that we're actually getting the alert message. If we want to make this a little bit more dynamic as far as the data that changes, we can go ahead and do that now. Let's go ahead and set the title on our state. And we're going to say that the title equals this dot uh, props dot data dot title. So we're going to set the initial props, uh, the title. And that's why actually we needed to call this super props, by the way because we're accessing our props and we need to be able to use them here. So we're going to set the value of title on this title. And instead of actually reading from props, because like I said, that's immutable, we're going to read this from state. So we're going to say this.state.title. So by default, it should have the standard title, but let's change our on click event to instead of alerting, uh, we're going to go ahead and change the, uh, the state. So we're going to say um, this.setState, and then we're going we're gonna to say title. Uh, your mom. All right, there we go. So now if you look at the app, we have our standard super bad title. If we do the click me, you get dynamic behavior, no page refreshes or anything like that. That's uh, the virtual DOM with React that's, uh, that's actually detecting those changes and, and making them. And you could even toggle back and forth. I mean, if uh, there's better ways of doing it, but if you were to go into the on click and just do a simple like if, um, you know, this dot state dot title equals your mom, then we want to say this dot set state and, and then say title and we'll change it back to super bad. Then we also need to do a simple return statement so that we can bounce out of the, uh, the the method call here. Otherwise, this would be set and you would always get the same result. So we want to return out of this. So going back over to the server, if we click, uh, we now change the title. You click it again, you change back. So you can now switch back and forth. No page reloads, nothing like that. What if you wanted to autoplay this trailer based on this button click? Could we possibly do that? And it, it would actually be quite simple. All we have to do is go ahead and take our props and we're going to go, um, this will be, we'll just, we'll assign the trailer. So th th this.props.data.trailer. All right, so we'll assign that value. And then now in the iframe, we actually want to reference our state value. So instead of this.props, we're going to re uh, remove all this and just say this.state.trailer. So then all I need to do is change the on click event. I'm going to go ahead and update this.setState. Set state, and then we're going to update the trailer to have the value of. We want the initial value that was in the, the state. So we're going to say this.state.trailer. So we want that initial value. But then what we're going to do is we're going to append a query string on here that's going to autoplay the video. And we're going to say equal one. So now if everything goes correctly, we update the state of this trailer. React's going to uh, react to it. And it's going to update this iframe now with this autoplay uh, appended to the URL, the embed URL, and it should just automatically play based on our own custom um, button event. And that's really awesome because the video is actually hosted through an iframe, which means, you know, over in California where Google is, that's where that actual web server is, is, is you know, that's where that actual video is, is hosted. 
So now if we go over here, we can see that we have the trailer. And if we go to click me and let's see if it starts. Boom, just like that. Just like that. This is why you want to get involved with React. Uh, this is why you Thanks want to Thanks for buy taking them, Seth. No, no problem. So I have some Gatsby JS stuff. I have some TypeScript stuff. My courses are, I'm getting back into the groove of things. I've been out of that game for a little while, actually over a year. It took me, I was actually out of that game for well over a year, but uh, I'm jumping back in now. So I, I like it. I'm going to do it some more. I'm getting better, I think. And uh, make sure you guys check out that course on Gatsby if you guys want to learn more and get up to date as to like how you could do this. Um, I also explain how to have a local file system too. So if you're not trying to hit a database and all that stuff like that, which I don't recommend with a static site, um, you can have a shitload of local, you know, file system type data though, and be pretty powerful, you know, depending on what sort of product you're trying to build. Like I can think of many, many ways that I can make money with like a static site generator, like Gatsby JS, like, um, you know, the time consuming type of things, you know, little, little bits here and there that I wouldn't really try to concern myself with right now. But like, you know, as a um, content producer and things like that, like th there are ways that you can you can really make, um, you know, I think an impressive site even with something like Gatsby and, and a static site generator. All right, guys, so that's really it for this quick introductory video to Gatsby JS and React. But if you guys are interested in learning more, I have React and TypeScript tutorials that I'm going to be extending, but they're already on Udemy. Um, and that will get you at least started with React and TypeScript. But if you don't want to do that, there's just also the Gatsby course, which is just focusing on, um, it's kind of just assuming that you know at least basic level React. But besides that, it, it's, it's still pretty introductory.